My talk today is about a project I've conducted for the past three years called Enchanting the Desert. Uh, Enchanting the Desert is a born digital web application. At all. The project is based on a, a, a historic slideshow of the Grand Canyon made by a commercial photographer named Henry Peabody in the early 20th century. He sold and toured his slideshow around the country to uh, a variety of audiences. Between 1902 and 1904, a cartographer named uh, Francois Mathis made a series of topo topographical maps for the USGS uh, of the Grand Canyon. The maps are remarkable in the history of cartography for the level of detail Mathis achieved using a method called plain table mapping. Uh, so what is plain table mapping? Well, like all mapping, it's translating a series, a series of points as they exist geographically onto a piece of paper that maintains some sort of geographic uh, relation. You, you line up the thing you want to, to draw on the map and look at it through this telescope thing and then stand there and you draw a line um, on the straight edge of the Alidade to where you're standing. So this, these, these maps and two others took him three years straight and he, strate he was strategically maneuvering his team at different elevations based on the season. In the winter they worked closer to the river while in the warmer months, they set up shop at hundreds of station points along the north and south rims. Sending his rod man down into the canyon, Mathis drew so many lines of sight from each station point that up to a week was spent at each point along the rim. The story about Francois Mathis, uh, his mapping, represents one piece of the project Enchanting the Desert. I researched and wrote this uh, essay about Francois Mathis along with uh, dozens of others in an effort to make sense of a single historical document. And that, that single historical document is a slideshow of the Grand Canyon made between 1899 and 1930 by a commercial photographer again named Henry Peabody. But the challenge for, challenge for me was how to uh, technologically approach this slideshow and how to represent and reinterpret and repurpose Peabody's images as interpretive tools. In other words, how could I, how could I operationalize Peabody's photographs into an interpretive cultural geography? And this project is really my attempt to answer this question. Um, from the beginning, I conceived it as something that would exist really as a web application. I wanted a, a platform on which I could build a reader experience defined by movement between, between representational types. And these represent, representational types are, to put it simply, Peabody's photos, uh, essays that I've researched and written, and custom cartography. So below each of the photographs, there's a toolbox. And here, readers can turn on landmarks, uh, trails, so you can see there's an um, identification of what's going on there. You can turn on trails um, and, or even turn on a, a, a replica of the, type, of the type of hand color tinting that Peabody and his contemporaries would often use in their, when they exported and sold their lantern slideshows. Uh, in a stroke of archival luck, Peabody's original typewritten narrations for the slideshow survived, and I was able to resuscitate them Bring, and bring them in as part of Enchanting the Desert so that readers have the option of moving through the slideshow as Peabody originally intended and reading his perspective. And so readers of Enchanting the Desert have uh, powerful, in a way, control over this landscape, over, over Peabody's Grand Canyon, in a way that Peabody may have dreamed of but was not able to achieve with his own virtual media, which is the slideshow. Kind of like what Francois Mathis was doing with his body to transpose landscape views into maps, I've striven in this project to transpose Peabody's pictorial views into cartographic ones. How are the digital humanities changing the practice of spatial narrative?
In the case of Enchanting the Desert, my answer is that DH is allowing the re-emergence of a geographical art that I think uses landscape as an epistemology. So in short, I mean that the things appearing together in a visual landscape scene, like a Henry Peabody photograph, become meaningfully related to one another by virtue of their proximity to one another. And the digital platform allows me to introduce a new type of spatial narrative stemming from the annals of geographic thought and practice. It allows proximity to organize information and for landscape to become an epistemology. And I'd like to end not at the end, but just at the beginning. So thank you for listening.